All right. I do not in any way want to break your make awesome turtle pattern method that we have worked on um, last week. So we're going to create another method in our turtle demo class to focus on um, some context to define our, uh, this new terminology. So we're going to create another public static void. I'm going to call our new method draw line because in the end there'll be a lot of notes, but our turtle is going to also draw a line. So there's our draw line method that we're going to focus on today. One challenge we have as we try to define some of these terms is that our definitions get intermixed. Um, so by the end of class, we will have defined all the different pieces, and I think it will make set as a whole, but sometimes I'm going to use a particular term before we've defined it. We kind of got this chicken and egg problem. But we're going to start by defining what we mean by objects. Um, so I'm going to do slash star to start a comment block. Personally, I find it hard to have a really good, clear definition of what an object is because it's such a general term um, in object-oriented programming languages. Um, so what I've come up with, the best I've got for you so far, is objects are entities in a program. And, and I appreciate that that's not super useful. Um, so I think what is more useful is to focus on what do objects have and how do we use them? So objects have properties, which are sometimes also called attributes. And objects are manipulated by invoking methods. Some of you may be familiar with Alice, and you used Alice in the past. Alice is a graphical programming language written in Java um, by Carnegie Mellon. Uh, it is the best uh, introduction to object-oriented programming that I've ever seen or used. Um, so if you're familiar with that, think back to the objects in Alice that you would actually create. And it's so powerful because when you create a new object in Alice, it shows up in the world like there is now a person standing there. Um, and objects in Alice certainly have properties um, like hair color, um, position, and objects in Alice can be manipulated by invoking methods. You can tell the person to wave or turn or walk towards something. Okay. Um, we've been focusing on turtles um, as, as our objects. And so turtles have properties as well, right? So our turtles have a, they have a pen color, um, they have a position in the world, uh, they have a pen width, um, and our turtles can be manipulated by invoking methods. We can call the forward method. We can call the turn left method. Um, lots of different methods we can call on, on turtles. Um, so in terms of the code that we started with, up above here, we did create a couple objects. We created a new world object. We created a new turtle object. Um, and then we assigned those to variables. So ocean and crush are variables that reference objects. I am going to try to be very, very careful in my choice of language, um, especially at the beginning of this semester, so as not to add to the confusion of, of some of these terms. Um, sometimes software developers can get a little bit sloppy with some of their terminology. So to be clear, and we're going to dive into this over the next couple of days, ocean and crush, they're variables. They are not objects. Variables and objects are not the same thing. Um, they're variables that we use to reference objects, but they aren't objects themselves. Okay. Um, and I'll try to speak precisely about that so as not to lead to, to confusion. Um, and we'll define variables more formally here in just a minute. When we talk, we can't talk about objects without also talking about classes. Okay, they're very much related, but yet very different. So I want to like take care of that that right away. So let's define cl classes. Um, I like to think of classes describe 
a collection of objects. So like, what does that mean? Well, all objects of a class have the same behavior. By that I mean they have the same methods. All turtle objects have all the same methods. So think back to when we looked at the Java documentation for the turtle or the simple turtle class. There was this massive page of methods that we could call on all turtle objects. So all turtle objects can go forward. All turtle objects can put their pen down. All turtle objects can turn right. Yeah. I've also heard of like blueprint. Yeah, I think blueprint's a great analogy, right? Um, a blueprint describes the properties and the behavior of something, but it's not that thing, right? If you have a blueprint for a house, you've got a sheet of paper. You don't have a house. But you can use the blueprint to actually build a house. Um, that's a great analogy, absolutely. So all objects of the class have the same behavior, like methods, and all objects of a class have the same uh, properties. Actually, let me type that more. Have the same type of properties. But this is key. This is the whole point of object learning programming, or one of the points. But they may have different values. What I mean by that is, like we were saying, the turtles all have shared behavior. They can all go forward. They can all turn right. They can all put their pen down. They can all hide. They have the same type of properties. And what I mean by that is all turtle objects have a pen color. All turtle objects have a position in the world. All turtle objects have an orientation. Um, but different turtle objects, or even the same turtle object over time, can have different values for those properties. One turtle object can have a blue pen. Another turtle object can have a red pen. Even the same turtle object, as it moves, changes its position in the world. The value of that property changes. Okay. So what objects of a given class share behavior. They share the types of properties. But what makes them unique objects is that they have different values. That's, that's the, key, the key idea. Um, in terms of our code that we started with, world and turtle are classes. So world and turtle are classes. A reminder, our syntax clue that world and turtle are classes is that they start with a capital letter. That's our syntax clue. So now we have a, a, a definition for objects. We have a dish definition for classes. We understand how they're certainly very much related, but yet two different things. Um, so the next step is for us to focus on how do we actually create an object. Because in Java, to do most useful things, we need to actually have an object first. Um, let's create a new world object in exactly the same way as we did up above. So the code to do that was we declared a variable ocean of type world. We assigned to it a reference to a new world object. So that's exactly the same line of code as we had up above. Um, and let's also make a new turtle object. So I'm going to declare a local variable crush of type turtle and assign to it a reference to a new turtle object, just like we did up above. And when we create a new turtle object, um, we can't just create a turtle without specifying additional information. Um, because turtles have to live in a world. So we have to specify which world the turtle lives in. So we can say new turtle and then specify ocean. That's the world the turtle is going to live in. We'll put another comment block above this because I want to unpack this line of code piece by piece by piece as we break this apart to figure out how are we actually creating an object. That's a, a super important concept that we will do over and over and over again. One thing I like about Java um, is that in general it's pretty readable. Maybe not quite as much as Python, but I like when we look at this line of code, it literally says 
new turtle. From that, I can infer, hey, we're making a new turtle object. That's pretty good. So that's the, the first key thing we need to do. We use the new operator to construct synonyms for construct that you will see, create, um, instantiate. But I'm going to stick with construct because it's consistent with other terminology in Java. So we use the new operator to construct an object. As we get used to this, the, we, uh, we often forget to actually use the new operator. We might say like crush equals turtle um, instead of crush equals new turtle. Leaving out that new is, is a very common um, omission as we get used to this, this syntax in Java. Okay. We'll define operators in our next unit. Um, I realized I just referred to it here without really defining it. Operators in programming languages are conceptually the same as operators in mathematics. Right? So think of the addition, subtraction, multiplication operators. They have operands, values that are input. Um, they, have, they evaluate to a, a value, a result. That's their output. Um, in programming languages, we have a, more operators um, than you might be traditionally used to in math. Uh, new is actually an operator as well. Um, it, it returns a value, um, which is the reference to that new object. So. All right, so that takes care of the first word, new. Immediately after new is the class name. Okay, So that's what we do next. The class of the object is specified immediately after the new operator. In this case, it's turtle. kind of completes the statement, I want a new turtle object. Okay. Much like when we call a method, we have a pair of parentheses after the name of that method. When we create an object, we have a pair of parentheses after the name of the class. So here we say new world, and there's our pair of parentheses. Here we say new turtle, there's also a pair of parentheses, but there's something inside those parentheses. Um, and sometimes we need that. If we need to pass additional information to construct the object, arguments are specified in parentheses after the class. In this case, we passed ocean. So <clears throat> if in order to create an object, we need to pass additional information, like in this case, well, where, in what world will this new turtle be created, be constructed? Um, we do that inside of the parentheses is where those arguments go. Uh, only if we need to. There may be no arguments. There may be five arguments. Whatever we need to specify this new object we're creating. So that basically explains everything to the right of the equal sign. We're making a new turtle object, and we're specifying that this new turtle object will be constructed in the world referenced by the variable ocean. The new operator returns a reference, and that reference is what gonna, we're going to store in this variable crush. So again, crush is a variable. It's not the object, but it does refer to the object. Um, this concept of like a variable referring to the object, the idea of a reference, is in my experience the most challenging concept in this course. So tomorrow we'll do like an activity to try to create a physical model of it that we can, that makes this a little bit more concrete. Um, we will revisit this unit after unit after unit in more and more depth as we go. Uh, until eventually my, my hope is that it just becomes an intuitive. Um, it'll be one of those things that you'll look back at in April and be like, wow, that was really confusing in September, but it actually makes sense now and seems, and seems simple. That's my goal. That's where we're headed. So. But we'll do the physical representation tomorrow because it takes much more time. Um, let's define a couple other terms though while, 
while we are here. I keep talking about variables, but we haven't actually defined a variable. So let's talk a little bit more about variables. So another slash star comment block. Um, good news. Variables, that term means the same thing in every programming language. Variables, variables, store values to be used later. Variables in programming languages are conceptually the same as the variables you use in algebra. In fact, the concept of a variable is perhaps one of the most powerful abstractions that exist. Right, so when you think of computational thinking, one of the pillars of computational thinking is abstraction. Variables are a great example of abstraction. It's something that has a name, but you don't necessarily know its value. And its value can be any one of many different possible values. That's a really powerful concept. That's at the very heart of algebra. right? Um, and it's at the very heart of like all programming languages um, as well. Variables in Java um, are comprised of three different things. So Java is a strongly typed programming language, meaning when we declare a variable, we have to specify its type. So variables in Java have a type. And I'll define type in a moment, but for example, last week we used the type int to mean it stores an integer value. Variables in Java have a name. That's where the abstraction comes from. We're going to create a variable called with here in just a moment. And variables in Java have a value. We're going to use the value of 20 in a second here. So before we can use a variable, we have to declare it. And when we declare it, we have to specify its type. So this is how we would declare a variable with and say it is an integer. So this is an example of declaring a variable. We are welcome to, but we are not required to, assign it a value when we declare it. Maybe we want to declare it now, but we're not quite sure what its value is yet. Okay, So it's fine to do this, and we can have code later that actually assigns it a value. So this is an example of assigning a value to a variable. We can do this all on one line of code if we want, but it's completely reasonable to do it on two lines of code. Um, we just need to make sure that the variable is assigned a value before we try to use it. Otherwise, the Java compiler will uh, tell us, hey, this is, this is not OK. I'm not going to compile this. You're potentially using a variable here that, that doesn't have a value yet. Um, we can do that in Python. We cannot do that in Java. So let's talk a little bit about these types. So I said this variable here has a type int. There are several different types in Java. Um, we're going to focus on just four of them in this course. Um, next unit, I'll show you the whole list, so at least you're aware. But we only are going to focus on four of them. So Java has several what are called primitive data types. These are data types that are built into the Java language itself. Um, Boolean is one of them. Boolean variables, uh, Boolean holds a value of true or false. Okay. Very similar to its equivalent in, in Python. If we want to hold on to an integer number, we use the int type. Int holds an integer number. If we need a real number, which we often refer to in computing as a floating point number, then we use a double is the type we're going to use. Double holds a real number, floating point, similar to the float in Python. And the last one is, is, a, is doesn't have a Python equivalent. Um, it's char. It's, it's short for character. The char type holds a single character, not a string, but literally exactly one character. Okay. Um, and that can be useful as well. Really, these three data types are the ones that are part of the AP curriculum. 
but char is pretty useful, and I have some cool programming activities we do that need a char, so we learn about a char as well. All right, let's actually have some examples of each of these. So here is a Boolean. So we spell it all lowercase Boolean. It turns red, showing it's a Java reserved word. Um, so that's a, a, so a good sign. Let's call it is summer. And it's still summer, so we're going to set that equal to true. Here is a double. It's referred to a double because it's a double precision floating point value. There's actually a standard for that. If we type double, it, it's red too, because it too is a um, reserved word in Java. Sales tax rate. I believe the sales tax rate in the city of Naperville is 7.5%. So there's that. Um, and finally, here is a char, or a character. Char also is colored red and blue jay showing that it's a reserved word in Java. And we'll assign it the letter C. An important difference between Java and Python. In Python, we can use single quotes and double quotes interchangeably. It doesn't matter. In Java, they mean different things. So in Java, when we want to literally refer to a character, we have to use single quotes like I did here. Okay. Um, we cannot use double quotes there. In Java, when we use double quotes like we did last week, it's when we're literally specifying a string, a sequence of characters. Okay. So single quotes and double quotes mean different things in Java, unlike Python. 